All right, so now we're kind of at that point where, like I said, I really want to kind of just finish this off, right? Um, we're not being as, as exhaustive or as extensive as we could to do this stuff, right? Um, but it's about giving you guys some good fundamentals, right? Kind of understanding some basics of texturing, some basics of sculpting, how to build a reasonably good uh, polygonal base mesh using box modeling methods. Obviously, retopologizing is something that exists and is quite useful for certain parts of models. We just, we're really not going over it for this project, right? It's, it's, a, it's a little tricky um, until you're kind of in a more advanced place to, to work with that. Um, so for us, just some box modeling kind of ended up being more straightforward and uh, stuff like that. All right, so what I want to do is I usually like to kind of give my um, character some place to be, right? I like to give my character some place to be. Um, so one of the things I'll do is I'll go back to kind of the modeling uh, workspace, and we'll go to 4 for object mode, right? And what we could do is we can go to add, right? And in add, there is a mesh, and you can actually add a mesh plane. It's right here. You can kind of see it outlined. It's polygon. So I've hit R for scale, right? Remember, R for scale. Remember, you can always grab on the handles, but remember, middle mouse button is that uniform scale, just like it's move, rotate, move scale, or uh, move, uh, view, rotate, view, move. Uh, when it comes to scale, it's uniform scale. It scales all three axes at the same time. W for move, so we can move it down. Uh, my snap is on. Let me turn that off. <laughs> um, if you ever see things moving weird or kind of jittery, like they're almost kind of like jumping, uh, make sure your magnet on the top is off, right? You do actually have snap tools in Blender. They're actually pretty good, too. Um, we just haven't really needed them on our character, right? Um, something we'll see a bit more in, like, say, modeling B, we do some hard surface stuff, right? But uh, if you ever get that, turn your magnet off. Right, that's your snap tool. Uh, so in this case, I'm just kind of moving my floor just to kind of really, I've just kind of created, right, a plane mesh, right, just a big polygon, um, just to act as a floor for us, right, just to act as a floor. Uh, so that's always good to do, right, get us a floor. Uh, in this case, what I want to do is I usually go to shading now, right, so I go back to the shading workspace. We can kind of see on our viewport here. Kind of maybe uh, minimize this shader part down there. And now what I want to do is I kind of want to set up uh, my lights a little bit more, right? Now, we do have EV on, right? And if you do go into your, um, uh, it's like the microwave, right? It's kind of the microwave briefcase. It's right, between, right below your uh, wrench and uh, screwdriver. That's where your rendering engines are at, right? And that's important because we're going to talk about that momentarily. Uh, but you kind of remember in the, in the uh, properties menu, you have the wrench screwdriver. Right below it kind of looks like a briefcase or a microwave, right? That's where your rendering engine's at. Now, at this point, to kind of get some of the basic lighting, we can just leave EV on. Uh, if you want your reflections to be uh, better, right, you can actually turn screen space reflections on, right? And it's not ray trace reflections, but it does kind of reflect some of the environment around it. Uh, we're not really going to go in depth into <laughs> how, to, how it really works, but it's it's kind of based on the view of the camera. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you can get reflections that look pretty good on a PlayStation 4, but when you get ray tracing on a PlayStation 5, you can see stuff underneath, and you can see stuff at angles that aren't exactly is, as in view. It's, it's actually properly tracing a, a light ray through the environment, so you get a, a much better, uh, more accurate reflection in many instances. Um, but screen space is still darn useful, darn cool. And you see how it does kind of take and give you kind of a, a more dynamic reflection off your surfaces. You can even turn bloom on uh, to give you a little bit more kind of a, um, a blast off the surface here. Uh, and you can open up the options for it, right? You can turn up intensity for the bloom. Uh, you can bring radius down or up. Um, there's some cool controls there for bloom. I think we're going to leave it off, though, because... Um, We'd have to go through and um, you know play with one or two settings to get it to look even better with the extra render. And since since you guys probably won't do metal, and we can go over this much more in like modeling B, um, kind of leave it there. So uh, so yeah, so that's kind of where we're at, right? Uh, just kind of some things there. Um, get a floor in there uh, if you want. You can turn screen space reflections on. Although, once again, this is just for the real-time preview in the viewport, right? Um, ray tracing is basically, in Global Nation, going to be on by default in Cycles Render. Uh, I just figured it would be good to kind of point out a few things 
right here because we are going to want to change this to cycle from EV. But EV is the real time render, uh, and it's quite a good one, right? And they've got plans to make it even better uh, going forward in the 3.0 series. Uh, but there's some neat things like uh, bloom and uh, screen space reflections that can make your metals and even your glows uh, look even uh, more amazing in real time. Um, but uh, just kind of pointing those out a little bit. Um, now, in this point, uh, remember, I have and I did create a collection with some lights in here, right? There's already a default light in Blender. You might not have created a collection, right? You might have just turned the eyeball off for this. Um, just like the camera, right? We can kind of turn both the eyeballs on for those, the whole collection. Uh, and I could select the light, right? By default, there is this camera and light in here. I created a collection to put them into, but uh, you might not have. So you'll probably see a camera and a light in your scene anyways, and you might just have the eyeballs turned off for them. Now, in this case, I could select the light, right? And you'll notice when I click on the light, you'll see that uh, our properties menu down here now has a green towards the bottom a green light bulb, right? A green light bulb. When I click on that, by default, it's a point light. Uh, but you can do a spotlight or an area light or even sun, which is a directional light. We're going to do sun because it's easy for us to do. So I'm going to turn on the sun. Now, to see this lighting in the viewport better, uh, remember, make sure you're on, uh, not sh shaded, but kind of the th uh, third one of these balls. That's your material preview. Um, if you click on that and you go to the little V next to it, you see how you can turn scene lights on so your scene lights will actually affect the environment. And now we can see our sun's a little bit bright. So we might turn that strength down, right? Remember that the uh, green kind of light bulb towards the bottom here, it's your light controls. You can change that default light to a different type. And I'm going to set, like, say, the intensity of strength to like 30. Also, I'm probably going to maybe hit W for move, middle mouse button, move my light over. You can actually grab this little uh, yellow dot to kind of change the angle, but also you can rotate it as well, right? E for rotate, middle mouse button for view rotate if you want a little bit more precise control. And so what we can easily do is start to actually, just through going to make sure you're on material preview, go to the little V here, make sure scene lights are on, make sure your light's actually visible, make sure it's selected, and then you can go into your green uh, light bulb icon towards the bottom here. Change your light to sun. Bring the strength down a lot, like it's a 1,000 by default. Probably set it to like 30, right? And all of a sudden, you can see how good the material preview actually is in uh, Blender, right? EV is quite good at uh, providing you a, a nice approximation of what your render is going to look like. Uh, so that actually gets a lot of things set up for us on this. Uh, I'm going to go to s uh, Save Scene As really quick here. Save As. Just call this uh, Blender rendering, right? Let's call this rendering. There we go. It's always good to have a couple of different versions saved, right? So now what we really need to do is also, I like to get my camera set up properly, right? So I'm going to select my camera, and I'm going to go to view. And uh, a lot of you guys remember this, or kind of vaguely remember this from the end of last quarter, right? Because this is exactly the same stuff we did for our crab. Uh, so there is actually that very last video in the crab creatures also is pretty much all the same stuff. So if you go to view with your camera selected, what you could do is you can go to cameras here, active camera, and then you'll see you're actually looking through the camera. Now the problem with this is it doesn't use the normal uh, navigation that we use, right? It doesn't use alt, left, middle, right mouse button. So to fix that, I go over right next to my uh, outliner, right? In, right, below, uh, right next to the uh, uh, red, green, blue, X, Y, Z. Remember, there's a little V that points to the left. We've seen it a lot for our um, add-ons, right? Things like Automere. If I click on that little V to open it up, you'll see there's a section called View, right? And what you could do is you could actually Uh, I think it's camera to view. Yeah, there we go. Yep. What you can do is just go to the view lock and set camera to view. And what now what you'll see is your normal navigation works. Alt left will rotate. Alt middle will move. Alt right will zoom. Right? So I like going into that, kind of click on that little V that points to the left right here. To open this up, I like going to view. And I like locking camera to view. That way the camera... Remember, we also go to view cameras, active camera, because we selected the camera. 
And that way, our normal navigation, alt, left, middle, right mouse, because we're using industry compatible, right, actually uses that to adjust your camera view. So I like that, right? It just makes it easy to just kind of get the nice view you want for this. So a couple of other little check boxes you want to turn off and on. Uh, the last big thing we want to do before we render this is I like to go to the last of these balls, right? Remember, there's a wireframe. There's basically kind of your solid shaded. There's material preview, which is basically EV. And then the last one is actually your full render, right? It's actually going to do a full render. In this case, though, it's still using EV, right? So we go back down to the, uh, the second of the property editors, right? Right below this wrench screwdriver to the microwave one. And instead of using EV as a render engine, we click on that pull down and we use cycles. And you'll see this actually takes a little longer to render. It's got a bit of noise, but you see there's better proper bounce light. And this rate, this reflection is actually ray traced, right? The only other thing we want to do is go to the denoising section a little lower down, right? So it's kind of still in this little briefcase microwave, right? You change the rendering engine to cycles. Uh, if you turn this on, Right here, this last ball, it shows cycles, so you can kind of get an idea. Um, open up denoising. Now, you could turn it on for the viewport, and you see how it actually cleans up that noise a lot? Uh, and of course, you want it on for the render, right? Now, in this case, whatever you want to use is fine, right? Um, open image denoise seems to work pretty well. Um, but if you have a, a nice 3D card, NVIDIA 3D card, you use optics. There's a couple of options there, but you'll find that just the, the open image denoise will work pretty well, too. Uh, particularly for what we want. But I, I usually like to turn it off for both. You can leave it off for viewport, though, and it'll still do it for render. But what it does is it just it gets rid of some of that noise there that's in the render, right? Uh, they actually made that better for uh, Blender 3.0, but since it came out like a week and a half before the end of the term, I was like, uh, let's just keep still working with Blender 2.9.3, <laughs> right? Uh, so you do want to kind of change these around a little bit uh, just to make sure your final render is going to look cleaner and nicer. Um, if you want to have a different background color, uh, what you could do is go to the world icon, right? There's a, uh, a red world icon right here. Now, if you want to just change the color, you could change the color. If you wanted to, say, uh, click on this yellow dot for color, you could actually throw in the sky texture, right? Which will actually do some neat um, kind of sunlight simulation stuff. I'm going to say let's not just to keep it simpler, but it is there. You can play with it, right? Uh, I'm just going to use a lighter color, so I just click on the color chip and just turn it up to like a lighter gray. And just keep it pretty straightforward for us, but if you did click on the color for uh, yellow dot for color, there is something called sky texture, which is actually pretty neat. And uh, you do kind of, a, a, it gives you kind of a color background like um, sunset uh, to noon, and you can adjust the actual time of day. Uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, we're just going to keep it simple, though, and not complicate things any more than we need to. So uh, you just go to the red planet, right? So it looks like a red Earth right here. And just kind of click on the gray here, the dark gray. Just turn it up a little bit. Kind of a neat little thing to do. The last thing is the third of the properties down here, right? The third of the properties down here honestly looks like a printer icon, right? It looks like a printer printing an image. If you click on this... Here's your resolution, 1920 by 1080. That's HD. That's t HD 1080. That's not HD 4K. We're going to be fine with HD 1080, but that's the default. So this is where you can just go to change your resolution if you need to. Um, our default will be fine. When we're happy and we've got like our camera shot and the lighting the way we like it, right? Maybe our background color turned up a little bit. We can then go to the render menu here, right? V right up at the top. Right? Remember, window saves screenshots right there, but right next to that is render. And the very top one is render image. The very top one is render image. When I click on that, that is going to go through and do the full render of our character. I'll zoom out a little bit. And it'll take a few minutes, right? <laughs> to go through here and do the final render. But it's still kind of doing a bucket render. It's kind of uh, finishing off sections and then denoising them as it goes. And this is how you do your lighting and rendering. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't take that long. Um, you just have to check on a few things basically, right?
and there it is. There's the final render. Done. Oops, almost done. It's kind of doing a little bit of finishing up there. All right. And that should now be done. And then we just go image right here, right? So this brings up this uh, whole separate window for our render. We can go to image. And we can just hit save as. And uh, we can save it as a default PNG uh, JPEG if you want to. But PNG should be fine also. Just call this uh, biped render. There we go. And of course, I can close that. And then if I minimize this, I should be able to see it somewhere on the desktop here, right? Somewhere there. And here we see we can just open this up, just double click on it. And there's your final render, right? So that would be it.